On July the seventh, nineteen thirty-seven, Chao Chouyuan was twenty-eight years old. He was studying in Wanping County, a small town about ten miles southwest of Beijing. His diary began on July the eighth, hours after the Japanese army started the war. 1937, this is my grandfather's diary. It starts from July eighth. As you know, the two sides exchanged fire at midnight. According to history record, Japanese forces demanded permission to enter Wanping County to search for an alleged missing soldier late on the night of July the seventh. The Chinese side refused. Then, at approximately eleven o'clock in the evening, the two sides exchanged fire. At around five o'clock in the morning on July the eighth, Japanese army opened fire and attacked the Lugo Bridge, an iconic stone bridge that connects Beijing and the front line. Chiao stuck a lot of newspaper clippings of that day on his diary. He wrote in his diary, saying, "Quote: The residents in the city felt calm. They were determined to coexist with the city." Lugo Bridge incident on July the seventh, nineteen thirty-seven, marked the start of the Second Sino-Japanese War, as well as the beginning of China's whole national war of resistance of Japanese invasion. The next twenty-one days, the Japanese air force reduced the county to rubble. Local residents saw aircraft circling overhead from time to time and heard a huge sound of explosion. On July the twenty-ninth, the county fell into Japanese army's hands. And the diary was recorded like this. I heard my landlady shouted, "We lost! We would become slaves for Japanese power." It was such a shocking and thrilling news. I went on the streets, and every people I saw, they looked lost in panic. Chao had to flee westward from Wanping to his hometown in central China on August ninth. He kept writing his diary on the way. On the train from Beijing to Tianjin, there were Japanese army everywhere. Not a single Chinese who was in charge of the railway station could be seen. Every stop and every train was directed by Japanese soldiers. All Chinese passengers were very scared. Well, if your destiny is in enemy's hands, how could you not be panicked? Chao then became a war correspondent and had followed the Chinese army to several battlefields across the country. He had wrote numerous articles about the anti-fascist war. Unfortunately, he was shot dead in the battle in Shanxi at the age of 33, and was entitled a martyr afterwards. On one of his letters to his parent, he wrote that every single man should stand up during the war time, saying, "Quote." I'm using my pen as a gun to fight. Please read those stories that I wrote for the newspapers, just like my letters to my family.